Hello everyone, this is Dr. Meet Shah once again with another video. In this video, we are going to solve April 2023 university question paper under the subject International Finance. Again, a very important video for all the TYBMS M6 students. Okay, now let us see in this particular paper which uh, different types of sum had appeared and how to solve them in the most easiest manner. Okay, so one by one, we'll start. The very first question was under question number 2P. The following quote is given in Mumbai that is 1 USD is equal to INR. They are giving you the spot rate and the bid rate. I mean the bid and the ask rate. And they are asking us three questions. Number one, is it a direct quote in India? Second, find mid rate spread and spread person. And third, calculate the inverse quote. So we will start one by one. Now the very first thing. Okay, we have noted down USD to INR. They are giving you the bid and ask. Now, the rule is very simple. Okay, the very first rule in order to identify whether it is a foreign currency or a home currency, the rule states that the foreign currency is always expressed as one unit. So, in this case, it's given one USD to INR. So, this one is the foreign currency. The USD is foreign, INR is home currency. Okay, so we know therefore USD is foreign currency and INR is home currency. Now, very simple. In whichever country, uh, in whichever currency or whichever uh, country the, there is a home currency, okay, that will become, you know, that becomes a direct quote. So, in this particular sum, okay, therefore, it is a direct quote in India. Okay, they ask whether it is a direct quote in India or not. So, if foreign currency is one, so the exact opposite of that will become the direct quote. Okay, so yes, it is a direct quote in India. Second, find mid rate. Now, mid rate ka formula is ask rate plus ask plus bid divided by 2 ask rate is 82.2325 and bid rate is 81.2125 divided by 2 okay we will get the value as 81.7225 next find the spread spread ka percentage ask minus bid so 82.2325 minus 81.2125 okay value comes to 1.02 Next, they ask us to find spread percent or spread percent is spread upon ask into 100. Spread we already found 1.02. Ask is given as 82.2325 into 100. So we divide, we multiply, we will get the value as 1.24 percent. So we were able to solve uh, whether it is a direct quote in India, find mid, spread and spread percent. Last is find inverse quote. So inverse quote formulas are very simple. Under inverse quote, first the bid rate. Bid ka inverse will become 1 upon ask. So that will become 1 upon 82.2325 which comes to 0 0.0122. And ask ka inverse will become 1 upon bid. So that will become 1 upon 81.2125 which comes to 0 0.0123. So finally, USD to INR, the inverse quote of INR. So see, USD to INR was given. So the inverse will become INR to USD is 0 0.0122 to 0 0.0123. Okay, so this is how you all had to solve the very first question, question number 2P. Now let us see the uh, along with that which other question was given. So uh, next question, question number 2Q was given as identify if triangular arbitrage exists and calculate the same. They are giving you USD to CAD, USD to CHF, CAD to CHF. Note, compare CAD to CHF code for calculating arbitrage and assume capital of CAD as 1 million. Now, this is a three point cross currency or triangular cross currency uh, or an arbitrage based sum. Now, for this, you need to learn two things. First, you need to know how to solve cross currency and secondly, the arbitrage part. Okay. Now, those who are not done this topic before, we have already created two different videos on cross currency and three point arbitrage. First, I would recommend you all go through that particular videos and then you can understand this particular sum again, a very simple sum. Okay? Now, remember they told you to compare with CAD to CHF. The, so this is already CAD to CHF. So this is already given. So that will come later on. So we'll have to convert these two currency, USD to CAD and USD to CHF. We'll have to find the cross currency and convert it into CAD to CHF. So uh, question number two, Q, deriving, we'll write deriving CAD to CHF using cross currency. So first we need to find the bid rate of CAD to CHF. 
the formula will be very simple first alphabet is cat we write it down second is ch we write it at the extreme and whichever is common it will multiply in both so cat to usd now cat to usd is this one but it's in the in the opposite direction if it is in the opposite direction it will become one upon so for finding bid we'll have to so we have to find bid so it will become one upon ask usd to chf is in the same direction so we'll directly take the bid rate of that so one upon ask for the first currency that will come one upon 1.1695 and bid is 1.1385 okay so we divide we multiply we'll get the bid rate as 1.1787 same way we need to find the ask rate so ask again again the first part was you know the opposite direction so it will come one upon bid and the other one will be taken as one upon ask so again we took the values multiplied divide we get the value as 1.1806 now this is a very simple uh, cross currency okay again i'm repeating those who have not uh, done this particular topic you will first have to go and view the previous two videos once you understand that logic the common simple logic is there once you all get understand that, that you know you will be able to solve any kind of arbitrage and three triangular you know arbitrage stuff okay once we have got this so now we got the bid rate we got the ask rate for cad and chf so the derived rate we have got cad to chf is 1.1787 1.1806 and they have already given you one cad to chf so given is also noted down in order to find the arbitrary, the first thing is whichever is the smallest value from the bid. From the bid, now this is the smaller value, the first one, so I note them down as B1. The side of that will become A1. The bottom will become B2. And here it will become A2. So that is the thing. Now, in order to find arbitrary, first note down B1, A1, B2, A2. B1 is the smallest bid rate. Once you'll get that, once you'll note down that, okay, so we'll just note down here, let B1, so to be more specific, I've written here, B1, let B1 be this value, A1 is this, B2 is this, and A2 is this. Now, we have to make a number line, we have to make a number line, when we'll post B1, A1, B2, A2, in the order, okay, in the order of ascending, the small to big, so B1 is the smallest, then is A1, then is B2, and then is A2. So B1, A1, B2, A2. And you have to only compare these three numbers. The rule states that if B2 is between B1 and A1, there is no arbitrage opportunity. Other than that, any combination will be there. There will be an arbitrage opportunity. So since B2 does not lie between B1 and A1, there exists an arbitrage opportunity. And if there is an arbitrage opportunity, we will apply into the formula. Arbitrage gain is B2 upon A1 minus 1 into 1 million because they are giving you the value as 1 million. B2 is 1.1885. A1 is 1.1806 minus 1 into 10 million. So into 1 million, that is nothing but 10 lakhs. So we divide, we minus, we multiply, we get an arbitrage gain of 6,691.51 CAD. Okay, that is our final answer so we have got an arbitrage gain of 6691.651 cat on every on a million uh cat okay capital investment of 1 million cat so this was the second sum based on question number 2q which was based on three point arbitrage and cross currency okay i hope you all have understood this now this was question number two now let us see what uh was the next question in question number three under question number 3p they are giving you spot rate usd to sgd they are giving you one month two month three month and six months forward calculate one month forward three month forward and six month forward of usd to sgd a very very simple sum now in order to start we'll first start with the one month forward so first step is always we need to note down the spot rate spot rate of usd to sgd is given as 1.3320 and 1.3390 one month forward premium is now see now how to understand whether it is a premium or a discount if bid is smaller okay if the first part okay if bid is smaller if bid is smaller than ask it is premium and if, if bid is greater than ask it will be discount okay so your bid is smaller than the ask so it is a premium so we write add one month premium it is 120 so 0 0.0120 and 0 0.0220 
we add up and we'll get one month forward rate that is 1.3440 and 1.3610 same way we need to find for three months so we'll note down again we'll start with again spot rate okay we note down the spot now for three months it is 1120 and 1220 again bid is smaller than us so it is three month premium we add those premium values and we get a three month forward which comes to 1.3440 and 1.4610 and lastly they told us to find for six months same way we first note down the spot six months again bid and us bid is smaller than us so it is a six months premium we add the values and we get a six month forward rate 1.5300 and 1.5470. Okay, so this is how you'll have to solve question number 3B. Now, in option to that, okay, the next sum, uh, not option, along with uh, 3P, the next one was 3Q. The question reads out that 60 day forward rate is given to us between. USD to CHF that is 0 0.9508 and spot rate is given to us 0 0.9520 and they told us to calculate 60 days AFM that is annualize forward margin and interpret the result very simple formula annualize forward margin ka formula is forward minus spot upon spot into 360 upon n into 100 forward rate is 0 0.9508 spot is 0 0.9520 the period is 60 days we are substituted into the formula so 0 0.9508 minus 0 0.9520 upon 0 0.9520 into 360 upon 60 because 60 days given into 100. We get the value as negative 0 0.763, 7563%. Okay. Now analyze forward margin. We got a negative value. So how will we interpret this? Negative result indicates that the base currency that is USD is at a forward discount and the variable currency CHF interest rate is less than the base currency interest rate by negative 0.7563%. Okay, so that is how you all have to solve the sum based on AFM that is annualized forward margin under this particular paper. Okay, very simple sum, just have to substitute the value and give a small interpretation. Again, those who haven't gone through this particular topic, again, a, a separate video has already been created under AFM. You all can go through that also. Chalo. This was 3P and 3Q. Next, we jump to 4, question number 4P. They have given us 6 months forward Euro to CAD. The rate has been given, the forward rate. Euro ka interest rate is given and this is a misprint in the question paper. Okay, it's not USD, it is actually CAD. Okay, they are given you Euro interest rate and CAD. So now whenever remember, whenever there are two interest rate given in the question, it is based on Fisher's formula. Where Fisher's effect formula states that forward rate upon spot rate is equal to home, uh, you know, uh, the interest factor of home upon the interest factor of foreign. So they have given you forward rate, they are giving you uh, the uh, home interest and the foreign interest rates and they are asking you to calculate the spot rate. Mother, we have spot, uh, we have forward rate, we have to find spot, but we don't have HI and FI, okay. These are interest factors. We have interest rate, we have to first convert into interest factor. So first we'll write calculation of HI. The formula is HI is equal to 1 plus IH, that is the home interest into M divided by 12. Now, Euro to CAD, so Euro is foreign, CAD is home. So, CAD ka interest rate is 1.75. So, 1 plus 1.75 upon 100 because it is 1.75 percent into 6 months forward. So, 6 upon 12. We get the value as 1 plus 0 0.00875 which comes to 1.00875. Same way, we need to find the forward factor, the forward interest rate factor. The formula is 1 plus IF into M upon 12. Foreign interest was 1.25. So 1 plus 1.25 upon 100 into 6 by 12. 6 months was the forward rate given. So when you, you know, substitute, you get 1 plus 0 0.00625, which comes to 1.00625. Now we have the forward rate. We have the spot. Uh, we have the HI. We have the FI. We need to find the spot rate. So our final formula again. F upon S is equal to H I upon F I. We substitute, we have forward rate which is given in the question. H and F I we just now found. We cross multiply. Okay, so we get 1.3493 into 1.00625 upon 
1.00875 we will get a spot rate as 1.3460 therefore euro to cad spot rate comes to 1.3460 so this is how you all have to solve the sum based on Fisher effect, which was given in the question. So remember, whenever there are two percentage uh, interest rates given, it will be directly towards Fisher effect. Okay, now I hope everyone have understood till here. Okay, now we jump to the second last question, which was 4Q. Now from the following data, find the best alternative for borrowing. Now this is, uh, this topic comes under two way. One comes based on investing and one comes based on borrowing okay now this in this paper there was borrowing related sum where 20 million mother 20 lakh has to be borrowed sorry two crores okay 20, one, one million is 10 lakhs so two, 20 million become two crore from a temporary period of six months exchange rates are given to us so now we need to borrow from three currency and we have to say which one is the better among the three so first usd is given spot rate forward rate and the rate of interest has been given to us so number one Net liability when borrowing from USD. We need to find liability because of borrowing. Okay. The formula is borrowing amount upon spot rate into 1 plus the rate of interest upon 100 into N divided by 12 into forward ask minus the amount borrowed. So borrowing amount is 2 crore. Okay, I think I have put 1 zero less here. Okay, we have put one zero less here, so we'll just put those one one zero extra. Okay, that's that's actually two crores. Okay, twenty million is two crores. So borrowing amount two crores upon the spot rate, which was eighty point one two five zero, into one plus interest rate was four percent given upon hundred into rate. Uh, the period is six upon twelve into the forward rate, which is eighty point eight eight nine zero minus two crores. Okay, so when you get this value. Okay, the amount comes to like around So we get 2 crores uh, 59 45 1, 6 minus 2 crores So we get the difference of 59 uh, 5 lakh 94,516 Okay, we get the net liability of 5 lakh 94,516 this was the net liability when we are borrowing from USD. So if you borrow from USD, this is the amount of liability, the interest and everything that we need to pay. That is approximately 59 lakhs. Sorry, 5 lakh 94,000. Now same way we need to get for Euro. So net liability when borrowing from Euro. Same. We have 2 crores. Okay. We will note it here also. 2 crores. Upon spot upon the spot rate 91.2750 into 1 plus the rate is 4.5. The forward rate is 91 minus 2 crore we get the value as okay 2 crore 5, uh, 5 lakh 88,910 minus 2 crores which comes to 5 lakh 88,910 same way for thought for GBP we need to find same formula so it will be 2 crores upon the spot rate okay into 1 plus the interest rate is 5 upon 100 into 60 divided by 12 into the forward rate whatever answer you get minus 2 crores from that and we get the value as 5 lakh 2084. Now, when you look at this carefully, uh, we have three different values. The lowest, the lowest will be our answer. So, in our case, GBP has the lowest value. So, my final answer will be borrow should be done in GBP as the liability is the lowest. Okay. So this is this was the you know the sum based on borrowing factor. So now there are two types of variation. Okay, there can be borrowing, there can even be investing. Okay, again two separate videos have been created for uh, uh, you know this particular topic to be studied in depth. Okay, with with, with different variations which can come across. So this was question number four Q. Now one last question which was there in the question paper. Question number five B. ANN Limited is considering to invest in a project requiring a capital outlay of 6 lakhs. So our outflow is 6 lakhs. NPAT has been given to us. Discounting factor has been given to us. And they told depreciation is going to be 20% on SLM method. Evaluate the project on the basis of NPV and advise whether you should invest or not. Okay, NPV method. So first we note down the format. We'll have year. They are giving you NPAT. So if it is net profit after tax, we need to add the debt. We'll get cash inflow. PV factor is given. 
we multiply and then we get the PV of cash inflow. Five years, NPAT is given at 3 lakh, 3 lakh, 2 lakh, 40, 2 lakh, 40 and 1 lakh, 20. We need to find debt. Debt is 20% on the original cost which is 6 lakhs. So 6 lakhs into 20% comes to 1 lakh 20,000. So in all the cases 1 lakh 20,000 will be the debt. Now we need to add up. 3 lakh plus 1 lakh 20, 3 lakh plus 1 lakh 20, that's come to 4 lakh 20. 240 plus 120 is 360 and 120, 120 is 240. Then we note down the PV factor which have been given to us. 0 0.877, 0 0.76, 0 0.67 and so on. Now we multiply them and we get a cash inflow ka PV and get the total of that. Which comes to 12,72,426. But that's simple. Once you get that, we apply into the formula of NPV is nothing but PV of cash inflow minus outflow. 12,72,426 minus 6 lakhs. We get 6,72,426. It is a positive value. So yes, ANN should invest in this particular project. That will be our final answer. Okay. Hello. With this, we were able to solve all the questions from this particular question paper of April 2023 under international finance. So I hope everyone have understood it. With that, we will be ending this video here. Thank you.